Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss one of the recent discoveries of what seems to be one of the most exciting potentially habitable exoplanets discovered in the last few years. And exciting really because it seems to be super close to us, and because it seems to orbit a very similar star to our sun. And so let's discuss the details of this recent discovery, but here I guess let's start with some of the basics when it comes to exoplanets, and especially the ones that we believe might be habitable or potentially contain liquid water on the surface. And so as of 2025, over 7400 different exoplanets have officially been confirmed, with the link in the description basically showing us each one of them, with thousands and thousands more awaiting confirmation through analysis by various telescopes. And though billions of exoplanets are expected to exist in the entire Milky Way galaxy, what's really surprising is that in the last few decades, since some of these first discoveries, scientists realized that the majority of exoplanets out there seem to be unlike anything in the solar system. The vast majority seem to be either super-Earths or mini-Neptunes, quite a lot of them seem to be Jupiter-like, and very often orbit extremely close to the star, and only a very small portion of exoplanets has been discovered to be terrestrial or some kind of a super-Earth. And of all of these thousands and thousands of discoveries, only a very small number of exoplanets has been found to be in locations where we basically expect liquid water to exist, and where we hope some of these exoplanets might host habitable conditions. Now this is mostly based on estimates of habitability by the Habitable World Catalog, a database you can find in the description below, combined with the data from the NASA Exoplanetary Archive that should be also in the description. And in this catalog, out of nearly 10,000 exoplanets, only 70 have been discovered to be potentially habitable, and only 29 seem to be rocky, with a chance of having surface liquid water. The other discoveries seem to be either mini Neptunes or a variation on some kind of a gas planet, such as the previously discovered and previously discussed Hycene worlds and Steam worlds. But even here this list is extremely optimistic. The majority of all planets in this list are actually extremely different from planet Earth and from anything in the solar system as well. But it is based on a relatively simple assumption. The assumption that surface habitability requires a certain distance from the star in order to potentially host liquid water, but also requires specific geophysical and geodynamical properties, including specific atmospheric density, specific type of star with very specific radiation, and even the plasma environment in the entire star system. For the majority of these planets behind me, most of these properties are actually unknown, and so even here, chances for these planets to be actually habitable and potentially contain liquid water is still extremely low. And so this whole list becomes much, much smaller if we make more conservative assumptions, ignoring star systems where we actually don't know certain properties. For example, ignoring some of the larger planets. It's extremely unlikely that a larger planet is going to be rocky, and if it's not rocky, it's unlikely to have oceans similar to planet Earth. So here everything has to be under 10 Earth masses and smaller than 2.5 Earth radii. On top of this, we probably don't want to study planets around stars that are too active or too extreme, such as the famous red dwarfs. And the thing is, if you look at this list, the majority of planets discovered are basically around M-type stars, red dwarfs. The most exciting discovery is around TRAPPIST-1 system, and that system seems to be pretty active as well. And so red dwarf stars, or M-type stars, are maybe not the best examples either. Mostly because these star systems are very different from the solar system, and the planets in these star systems are going to be very different as well. For one, they're all going to be tidally locked, always facing with the same side to the star, but also receiving huge amounts of X-ray radiation and huge amounts of flares coming from the star, mostly because they're so much closer to the star compared to planet Earth. And so in that sense, some of the most exciting exoplanets astronomers want to study are usually around G-type stars, Stars very similar to our Sun, except that G-type stars are not very common. They seem to only represent approximately 7% of all stars in the stellar neighborhood, and not a lot of planets have been discovered around G-type stars compared to anything else. For example, our neighbors, Alpha Centauri, is a system of a red dwarf, a K-type star, and a G-type star, and we know that the G-type star does not seem to contain any planets around it. With a partner that's a K-type star, a little bit smaller and less massive, doesn't seem to contain anything either. Now the third partner, Proxima Centauri, does contain a planet, but it's a red dwarf. 
And so despite having these really exciting sun-like stars around us, so far nothing has been discovered in the habitable zone around them, with similar discoveries around other G-type stars as well. And that's basically because it's just hard to find exoplanets in general, but especially around certain types of stars. And so if we go through this list again, and cross out anything that seems to be around some kind of a super active star or a star different from our sun, we're actually left with just a handful, and a handful that we know very little about. Now we've actually discussed many of these exoplanets in some of the previous videos that should be in the description, but here we have Kepler 1606b at 2700 light years away from us, a potentially rocky planet in the habitable zone of a G-type star, although in this case, since it's so far away from us, it's super difficult to study anything about this planet. We also have Kepler 452b at 1800 light years away, once again potentially rocky, but same problem as before, just way too far to discover anything else. And we have Kepler 22b at 635 light years. So basically just three exoplanets around G-type stars in potentially habitable zones. Now technically there's actually one planet around a K-type star that's also potentially exciting, but we don't know enough about K-type stars to know if they're similar to G-type stars like our Sun. In contrast, all of the nearest potentially habitable planets discovered in the last decade all seem to orbit red dwarfs, and in many cases very active red dwarfs. You can find out more about some of these planets in additional videos in the description below. But then, if you keep going down the list, there is actually one intriguing object, and it's an object you see right here, sometimes referred to as A2G Eridani G, but also referred to as HG207-94. And while this is one of the closest G-type stars to us, and for many years scientists speculated that it potentially has a bunch of exoplanets as well, but it was just very difficult to discover what sort of planets and at what distance from the star. Now even today it's not actually clear how many planets there are, but possibly four, although only three have been officially confirmed. And this, as you can see, is only 20 light years away from us, and is also a relatively mild G-type star, a little bit less bright and a little bit less massive than the Sun, with 80% of solar mass and 90% of solar radius. But it's also just a little bit older, possibly 5.8 billion years old, so just over 1 billion years older than the Sun. And so after two decades of observations, we actually have enough data to finally confirm certain objects here, and specifically one really exciting planet. First of all, the star system here seems to contain some kind of a dust disk at approximately the same distance as Uranus from the Sun. It's not entirely clear why this disk is there, but it's maybe something similar to the asteroid belt in the solar system. Likewise, we can now confirm two of the closer planets to the star, both a little bit more massive than planet Earth, and one orbiting every 18 days, one orbiting every 90 days. With both of these planets basically being super Earths, and very likely extremely hot. But a recent detailed observation of the third planet, planet HD 20794d, revealed that this planet seems to be actually orbiting right in the middle of the habitable zone disk. Except that this one is also potentially a super Earth, and very likely the biggest planet in that star system as well. It's about 5.8 masses of planet Earth, and is very likely either some kind of a very large terrestrial world or possibly some kind of a mini Neptune. But in this case, it's hard to know for sure because we've never really seen a transit of this planet, so we don't really know its exact size. As a matter of fact, this planet was discovered by measuring what's known as radial velocity, observing the motion of the wobble of the star by looking at the miniature redshift and blue shift anomalies. That's how the scientists know its exact mass and how they're able to work out the exact orbit. And so in this study, by using some of the most advanced instruments, such as Espresso and Harps, able to study exoplanets with extreme detail, and also using 20 years of observations from various other telescopes, scientists definitively confirmed the existence of this somewhat strange planet. Strange because of its orbit. It does not have a circular orbit, and it seems to be quite eccentric. It seems to extend from about 0.7 AU at its closest, which is around the same distance as Venus from the Sun, but then go all the way to 1.5 AU, which is basically where Mars is located away from the Sun. And so every 650 days, this planet goes between these two extremes, with a single year actually being relatively similar to what we have on Mars, or approximately 40 days shorter, with this very elliptical orbit suggesting extreme changes on the surface and potentially extreme climatic conditions that basically change throughout the year. But because in this case, this star is actually not as hot as the Sun, there is now a very high chance that, assuming that this is a terrestrial world, 
and assuming that it has any water on the surface, that water could potentially become oceans. Because even at its closest to the star, it's still not going to receive as much heat as Venus. But more importantly, because the star system is so close to us, and because this is such an exciting world, and also because the star is quite luminous and relatively stable, it presents us with an excellent opportunity to observe the atmosphere of this planet at some point in the future. Essentially allowing us to figure out what sort of a world this is, figure out if this is a habitable world and if these planets can be habitable, and even figure out what happens to planets with such extreme orbits. Now we obviously have no idea how it assumed this orbit, but very likely because of the interaction with something else in the star system that changed its orbit so much. And so if this planet is terrestrial, it might resemble something like this. And also if it does have water on the surface, this water would basically go from the ice state to water state pretty much every single year. Which is technically not a bad thing. We know that these dramatic changes are maybe one of the main reasons Earth early on was able to develop life on the surface, as a lot of early conditions were actually quite extreme, especially because of the interactions with the Moon. And so the orbit of this planet technically also makes it somewhat exciting. And so even though technically this is the 12th closest habitable exoplanet to planet Earth, in reality, because this is the only one around a G-type star, it seems to be the most exciting and the most interesting of them all. The only planet we've found so far that has such a unique orbit, and the only one around the star, very similar to our Sun, in basically solar neighborhood. But unfortunately, at least for now, that's basically all we know. Even after 20 years, this is the only information we have, and only additional observations with even more powerful telescopes can possibly reveal something else. And so until those future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.